In this section of the course, we're going to look at fluid power. And fluid power, we often, uh, in the vernacular, in the common uh, uh, industry, we often talk about this as hydraulics. Uh, although as engineers, when we say the word hydraulic, you know, we've had uh, hydrology classes and so forth, so we think about water flowing in channels and all that kind of stuff. And so that, that term is a lot broader. Uh, the agricultural industry, construction industry, and a lot of those places, they use that term a lot to talk about this. But more technically correct term is fluid power. And so it's, it's creating power, moving power, transferring power from one place to another using a fluid. <clears throat> so let's take a closer look at this diagram that we have up here. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, this is a, a very simple, somewhat of a typical fluid power type system. So we have a number of components there. And so we'll look at uh, on the left hand side, or actually we'll start from the bottom here. So we usually got some kind of a, of a reservoir or some kind of fluid that we have a supply of that fluid. We have that fluid then moves from the reservoir through a pump. So we've got a pump here that is, and what that pump is actually doing is cre taking rotational mechanical energy. So there's usually a shaft going into the pump that is rotating. And that shaft, uh, that, that's rotational power that may be from an engine, electric motor, it could be a lot of different things. Um, but that is taking that rotational energy imparting that now into the fluid. So as the fluid moves through the system, it's going to have velocity and it's going to have pressure. And so that's what's going to give us the power. So the power, what we're we talking about, mechanical power we looked at before, mechanical power, P sub M, is equal to torque times speed. So we have seen that, we've worked with that, with our engines, looking at the torque speed curves and all that kind of stuff. Well, now we're going to translate that into fluid power. And fluid power, we can represent as the, the pressure. And so we can have, I'll use a delta P because we're always going to be looking at pressure drops. And we'll talk about that as we go through this section and be clear on what we're talking about there. And that's somewhat analogous to the torque. So the, what we have torque in there, that's sort of the force side of this. And then the speed side is analogous to the flow rate. So we, your book uh, uses the, uh, the, uh, the notation of capital Q there for flow rate. <clears throat> and so we have that flow rate. So now we have flow rate going through this system. There's some pressure on that fluid. The pressure is caused by whatever's going on downstream. And so fluid moving through the systems, we have a number of valves and all these symbols we'll talk about and they'll make sense, but we have a number of valves in here. This would be a typical valve. And that valve controls where that fluid goes and when it goes and how much of it goes. And so we can control the fluid in a lot of different ways. We can control the pressure of that fluid and for safety reasons and, uh, and a lot of other things. And then it goes downstream and then it does something else. So we're actually, typically we convert this back into into a mechanical power again. So this symbol over here is a hydraulic motor. So we've got rotational power. So we take mechanical power, we convert it to fluid power, and now we're converting it back to mechanical power. So another rotating shaft that's going to rotate something out there. Well, why did we do that? That's got to be some inefficiency. There's got to be some questions of why we would even want to do that. And uh, we'll look at some reasons why we use fluid power because for one thing, and I'll just throw this out right now, these are hoses that go from the pump to the valve and from the valve out to the hydraulic motor. And hoses can go anywhere. We can go around corners, up and down hills, through holes, um, and, and we can bend them back and forth. And so there's a lot of flexibility. And that's one of the main reasons that we use fluid power and one of the big things. Okay, um, as we go through this and look at this, you, you'll see that there's a real close analogy with these fluid power systems and electronic circuits. And that may scare some of you, but in some ways I think this is much easier because you can picture fluid flowing through a type pipe. Electrons flowing through a wire sometimes are a little bit abstract, but it's very similar in terms of context. The fluid goes through the pipe, we see it moving, there's resistance downstream, that causes some pressure buildup, so the pressure is like the voltage in the electronic circuit, <clears throat> the resistance, the load that we have downstream, the amount of torque that's on this motor 
for instance, that's going to be uh, how much uh, voltage drop is going to be across that. That's going to determine how much current or flow goes through it. And so there's a real close analogy there, and including a lot of the components that we'll look at as well. We can actually have capacitive type elements in a fluid power system that will store energy. And so <clears throat> we have some neat components and th some things like that that we can do with them. All right, let me talk just a little bit about the fluids that we have in here. And we will come back to fluids later on, get do a little bit more with them. But when we talk about fluids, typically in a fluid power system in agricultural construction, those kind of industries, we're talking about an oil-based system. So some type of an oil. So we'll talk about hydraulic oil. Uh, it's got a fairly significant viscosity. It's often petroleum-based. But it doesn't have to be an oil-based uh, fluid. We can use a lot of different fluids. In fact, think about uh, if I would want a fluid power system in a food processing facility, for instance. Um, what are the consequences of a little leak? So if I'm making Doritos, for instance, and I've got conveyors and things that are moving Doritos from one place to another, I really don't want little drops of oil on my Doritos, and you don't want to eat them either. And so maybe I want to use some type of a biodegradable oil. So maybe like a vegetable-based product we can do. Um, we can actually also use some, uh, some water in these systems. And we see a number of people <clears throat> looking at using water-based fluids or a water fluid uh, in, in food processing facilities, for instance. Another place would be on golf courses. Uh, so the machinery we use to mow and maintain golf courses, a lot of those are hydraulically driven, have fluid power systems. The lawn mowers and so forth have a lot of hydraulics in them. If I blow a line, break a, a hydraulic line on a golf course in the middle of a green and it sprays hydraulic oil all over that green, that green is dead for a long time. And it's very expensive to dig out the soil to maintain that or leave a brown spot there is unacceptable. And so we can use, uh, looking at using water so that if it do blow a line, it's not gonna cause a problem. Now, the one we have to think about with water, think about water versus oil and it's the lubricity. So oil is going to lub naturally lubricate all our parts, keep them moving and everything. Water won't do that. In fact, water is corrosive. So what kind of additives can we put in the water to, make, to give it some lubricity <clears throat> to reduce the, the corrosive nature onto our uh, components and so forth? So there's a lot of work in there. We're going to focus on oil, and we're really not going to look in a whole lot of detail at the different fluids. But through this course, we're going to be kind of talking uh, and, and really focusing our discussions around oil uh, and oil-based products. Um, the other thing that I, fluid that I put down here that we don't think about is air. And air is a fluid, and so we can have pneumatic systems, and a fluid power system that works on air, we usually talk about that as a pneumatic system. Uh, so we can do that, um, and it's like water and oil, except that it's compressible, and so that adds a level of complexity in the computation of how we compute flow rates and stuff like that because uh, uh, the air compresses. So flow rates uh, you know, is gonna change based on pressure and so forth. So, so it adds a little level of complexity. And we're not gonna go much into air. Again, we're gonna focus mostly on oil as the fluid that we work with, okay? Now, one other thing I wanna mention, this drawing over here is a circuit drawing. So analogous to, again, you know, electronic circuits where we got batteries and current sources and, and switches and things like that. Um, but these symbols are developed by the Joint Industry Council, JIC. So these are JIC symbols and they're standardized. And a lot of software packages you can get, drawing packages will have these JI symbols built into libraries so I can pick them out. Um, Visio is one that I like to use. The Microsoft Visio is a very simple drawing program and they have uh, libraries in their uh, engineering uh, um, in their engineering libraries. They have uh, sub-libraries with the fluid power components in there. And they're pretty descriptive and as we go through looking at each one of these components, you'll see that, that the drawing, the pictorial of it actually is pretty descriptive of what happens. So that pump there, for instance, it's a circle, so it kind of a lot of pumps are sort of round devices, and it has an arrow pointing out showing that, hey, there's, there's oil coming out of that thing or fluid moving out of it. And so they're relatively descriptive of what's going on. So these JIC, or Joint Industry Council symbols, uh, will come up. I'll show you these symbols as we build drawings and stuff like that. We'll see what they are, see how descriptive they are, and, and we'll move through it like that. 
So that, that's the fluid power systems uh, and what they look like in general. Uh, so kind of where we're going and the basics of it. Um, just some uh, examples of, of what they might look like. Uh, here's a couple machines that use a lot of fluid power. And uh, you can see uh, you know, the loader on the upper left there. A lot of these are, are a lot of, of fluid power in there, specifically to lift that bucket up and down and, and tilt it. Uh, we use hydraulic cylinders there or fluid power cylinders. To do that, a lot of the locomotion, the wheels and everything, are driven by fluid power. And so that, that's what we have there. Uh, the one on the upper right, I'm always fascinated by these machines. You see them going along the edge of the road, mowing ditches and stuff like that. So there's a mowing machine out on the end of an articulating arm. And that arm, they can move it up and down and in and out and tilt it in all different directions. Um, and so they have uh, uh, sophisticated joystick controls and it takes a lot of, uh, of practice to learn how to do that, but the, the operators that run these things are very good and they can follow contours of ditches and so forth, but they have a lot of flexibility and that's done with a lot of fluid power. So there's no mechanical mechanism going out that arm. Even the rotating uh, machinery on the end that, that does the cutting, it's all controlled by fluid power. So it's just a lot of hoses going out that arm that controls everything. Um, that machine on the bottom there is, is an amazing machine and I like to look at that. That's a sugarcane harvester. Uh, typically used for harvesting sugarcane. We actually had this one in Kentucky uh, a couple years ago looking at harvesting sorghum, so that was kind of an interesting project. And uh, we don't often see sugarcane harvesters in Kentucky, so it uh, raised some eyebrows and had a few uh, uh, tourists out there looking, what is that thing? But basically it just gathers up sugarcane or gathers up biomass, cuts it up into chunks, into billets about a, a 18 inches long, foot long, something like that, and then conveys them into some type of a receiving truck or vehicle. And this machine is all hydraulically driven. And these are, are really powerful machines. Three uh, uh, engines in there in excess of 300 horsepower. And what you see on the picture in the lower right there uh, with those two black uh, uh, boxes and all the hoses there is kind of in a, in a container that's opened. That is the, the engine, the end of the engine. So the engine shaft is connected to a bunch of pumps, several pumps and they create a whole lot of fluid power. And then everything on that machine is driven by fluid power. So there's just, instead of chains and belts and, and other kind of machinery that, that, that transfers power from one rotating mechanism to another, it's all fluid power. So it's just hoses running everywhere and then a lot of valves and uh, the controls in the cab, then the operator has switches and things that they can control, electrohydraulic valves. So that's all hydraulically driven or fluid power driven. And we see that in a number of, a lot of machinery out there. You know, this is just an example of kind of a, of a, uh, of a pretty large machine, pretty powerful machine, a lot of fluid power, a lot of uh, fluid power development that has to go into a machine like this. So that's fluid power, a little bit of an introduction to it. So where are we going from here and, and, and why do we do it? Again, I go back to that talking at first how we were converting mechanical power, usually rotational power, into fluid power so we can get it somewhere and then translate it back into mechanical power. And there's a lot of efficiency, inefficiencies in that process. And that's one of the disadvantages you see on the right-hand column there of fluid power is that we have to live with some inefficiencies. And most of the time in machinery, when I have some inefficiency, that's energy that is not being used for useful work. So where's it going? So if I have energy coming in and less energy coming out doing mechanical work, that other energy has to do something. And nine times out of 10, that's going into generating heat. So that builds up a lot of heat. Fluid power systems get hot. Uh, we have to think about how we keep them cool and so forth. And that's because of the inefficiencies there is that heat development. Okay. So that's one of the, the bad things. But the good thing is, again, I mentioned flexibility. You know, hoses, we can run them in everywhere, up over stuff, around stuff, through stuff. Uh, so that's a, a big advantage is the flexibility of being able to move power from one point to the other. It's very controllable, so I can control flow rates, I can control pressure, so I can control how fast things move, I can control um, how much force I can develop, I can build in safety in these things uh, with pressure limitations, and so there's a lot of uh, advantages in terms of controllability. It's very controllable. Um, and I can take easily, I can take 
uh, rotational motion out of an engine and turn that into linear motion with a hydraulic cylinder. And we'll see those, we'll do calculations with hydraulic cylinders and so forth. But I can easily do that, and I can do that at some pretty high forces. So if I can lower the speed with fairly significant pressures, large components, then I can build up a lot of force. And so that, that is one of the big advantages to us is the force. But again, disadvantages we have to think about is inefficiency. Uh, these systems tend to be pretty noisy. So when you got pumps running and moving fluid and they're going through uh, holes and stuff like that, it's going to sing and make noise. And so they are uh, typically very noisy type systems. Uh, they can be pretty messy. Uh, anybody that's worked around agricultural tractors knows that, uh, and we'll see the connections on the back end of a tractor. One of our labs, we're going to actually measure and evaluate the hydraulic performance or how much hydraulic power is available from the back of a tractor. So we have plug-ins and those plug-ins, they get oil everywhere so the back of the tractor is always caked with oil and then when you get in dust that oil becomes mud and so you have this this cake on the back so it's a very messy system which is why we have to think carefully before we use it in a place in a, in a sensitive environment like as I mentioned golf courses uh, food processing facilities and so forth you know we don't want this oil getting on something that it's going to damage uh, so those are the things we have to think about. So it's, it's messy and it can be somewhat dangerous. Uh, and, and there are, it's rare, but it can happen that we can get small pinhole leaks in systems and on fairly high pressure systems, a small pinhole will give a very small directed jet of, of liquid. And so you've probably heard about water jets. We can actually cut uh, steel and other materials with a jet of water if it's small enough and at high enough pressure. Now we don't run in those kind of pressures in hydraulic systems, but it can be enough that a small pinhole will actually penetrate the human body, go through the skin, go through the eye, and so forth. And so uh, when working around fluid power systems, we always have to be careful about that. Uh, we have to watch for those leaks. Uh, we always wear eye protection and so forth. Uh, so those are the things that, uh, that we've got to think about. So again, this is why we would use fluid power. And what we're going to do is, is look at from here, we're going to look at the different components of a fluid power system. We'll talk about you know the pumps and, and actuators and valves and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll kind of put it together and do some design work and show you how to do some design. And uh, you know, in our department, we have a, a whole course on fluid power. So we're going to cover in a week or two just an overview of some of the basics of fluid power. Uh, if this is fun, and I, I enjoy this, there's a lot of logic involved in terms of how we get power from one place to another, how, we, how the fluid moves, and designing components. Uh, so the, there, that course is available. That'll go into more depth and talk about a lot more of it. So we're going to be, again, high level view of, of basics, fundamentals of operation of fluid power systems uh, th over the next uh, week or two here in this material.